Time to shine today, podcast varsity squad. This is Scott Ferguson. And unfortunately, I've had to reschedule a couple times with my good friend here, Oren Caviti. Uh, and I, I just feel bad about doing it. So thank you for, to him for carving the time to come on. And it's super early in the morning where my good friend Oren is. He's in Taiwan. And it's uh, just fun, fun to bring people in from all over the world uh, to really level up you guys out there listening that we're all so grateful for. And we're going to get into, um, you know, acupuncture, which is something that I full heartedly believe in. It's helped me with my healing, my blood flow, um, it, it just everything. And, and Oren has been in the practice since 1987. He specialized in free, pain-free Japanese acupuncture, developed in his own rhythmic moxibustion method, which he teaches worldwide. He's based in Taiwan, like we said. He delights in coaching fellow practitioners, therapists and professionals to find their path using tiny habits to make big changes. And what I love about Arne is he's so passionate about it that, you know, he's, that he, he's a great teacher. And that's something that all of us love to hear. And he's a fun teacher. And Oren, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today podcast varsity squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? <laughs> Green. Green, okay. Uh, green, yeah, because it's the color of the grass between my toes when I exercise in the morning. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. is, it, is it the grass green there in Taiwan, kind of where you're at? Uh, it's green, but um, I live by, uh, I live in a town, a harbor town, and I'm by a river, and sure. by a park, literally I walk 30 meters out of the door and I'm, I'm by the river. Oh. And there's loads of people doing Tai Chi and Qigong Ooh. and uh, exercise like, everywhere along the riverbank in the mornings so the grass gets worn down in different patches <laughs> under, the patches under the trees get worn down but uh, yeah it's green awesome so uh, so you you said qigong and tai chi also both of yeah, them you, yeah. you practice that as well uh, i i do i do qigong uh, that's oh, qigong? my morning okay. routine yeah Very so good. qigong is just basically a kind of you're regulating your chi in a different mm -hmm. way uh, it just sure. means cultivating chi i love uh, it so i, I, I do exercise it so that's, much power in that and thank, thank you again for coming on. And let, let's get to the roots of you, Oren. You know, like, where did you, where did you kind of, like, you're from Great Britain, is what I'm thinking yeah. here. And then <laughs> how did you get started and then kind of level up to the point where acupuncture was your, hmm. your passion into teaching it? Uh, well, um, acupuncture rescued me, I think. Uh, okay. I was... Um, I studied French at university, but I was a university dropout. I was part of party animal. I was playing in bands. Um, <laughs> really? And I wasn't very, and I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, yeah. So I was a musician for a while, but um, uh, a woman moved. I was in a shared house, and a woman moved into the house. Bless her, Roisin Golding, mm -hmm. and she was studying acupuncture. And, you know, I said, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I study acupuncture. And this little light went off in my head. I said, I could do that because I'd heard about acupuncture. Sure. That was in 1983. And um, she, one day she just bundled me into a car and said, come to the college. I want you to, to visit it. Stop talking about it. And I went sure. there and I got, I, I liked the college. Mm -hmm. So I started in 1984 uh, and it changed my life wow. because when you're, I mean, a lot of people go into therapy because they want to, you know, they want to help people, but at the same time, they want to help themselves Absolutely. and they've got broken things that they need to fix. So right. I, I, I fixed a lot of broken bits and I came to terms with the bits I can't fix. So uh, I, it, it changed my life. It was fantastic. What was the greatest benefit that you found personally, not what you teach, but personally for Oren with acupuncture? Hmm. You mean when I received acupuncture? Yes, sir. Yep. Ah, uh, it's it's mood altering. Um, okay. So you know you can walk into an acupuncturist feeling one way, mm -hmm. and you can walk out feeling another, like sure. thirty minutes later. And that's why that's why it's used for drug addiction so much because you know people who take drugs, for example, uh, they you know they feel bad, so they take mm -hmm. ice or coke or whatever it is they take. Sure. And then it's it's mood altering, so they feel better. Right. So if you can give them a therapy that uh, that changes their mood, which is a positive therapy, something mm -hmm. like acupuncture, then they've got a substitute. So, I mean, yeah. So for me, it was mood altering. I was depressed, you know, when I first started acupuncture and uh, it really helped me to come to terms and pull myself together. Okay. Uh, it, it was great for me. Yeah. 
I love that and love it. So when with the 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 style that you teach with the moxibustion, how is that mm-hmm. any different than maybe traditional acupuncture, or is it different mm-hmm. at all? It, it's very different. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I've been developing my own moxibustion style, and I think I should explain to you. Yes, please listeners and and to your viewers because i think some people are watching it right and some people are listening to it absolutely sure yeah um what what is moxibustion um moxibustion is basically you get a herb and you burn it and you warm up the skin uh and that's done in that's done in all kinds of ways so sometimes the most common way uh used in china is they put it into like a cigar form okay they wave this cigar over the skin and it's like a radiant heat Okay. Uh, in Japan, in particular, they like to to shape these little cones like pyramids and put them on the skin and light them like a birthday candle, and it burns down. And before okay. it gets too hot, you remove it. Okay. So that's called di- direct moxibustion. Um, and I've invented this. Uh, invented. I've, I've developed a kind of uh, therapy which uses a piece of bamboo, and a piece of bamboo about well, here's one for those your viewers. Oh, can see okay. It. But um, it's about the size of my thumb. Sure. Um, wow, and, it is. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's just a short tube of bamboo and you stuff it full of the herb and you light one end. Okay. And it becomes like a pressing rolling tool. Okay. And it feels incredibly comfortable. So it's great for relaxing tight muscles. It's great for anxiety. It just feels really comforting. And okay. you apply it rhythmically, rhythmically on the skin. Okay. You know, bamboo, bamboo is essentially, it's a very rhythmic, the tube is rhythmic. Yes, sir. It rolls. Right. So you can use it as a roller. Okay. So it's become like a whole body therapy over the last 12, 15 years. And it's really an exciting thing for me. I love it. What, what um, herb do you use if, you're, if, if it's not too much um, secret sauce to share? No, no, not at all. No, it's, it's, um, it's called mugwort in English, which sounds like it's from Harry Potter. <laughs> um, and uh, it's got a Latin name, Artemisia oh. vulgaris, but it's basically, it's, it's a roadside herb. It grows, it grows really? all over the place in, in Asia. Uh, okay. It, it grows, but yeah. And um, you can pick it up and dry it. And, uh, but I mean, to make really good quality stuff, you need to dry it a long time. But, okay. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. I love it. So there is, um, a stigma around, oh my gosh, how can this work? You know, especially with Americans, mm. they have it. So how do you help them understand what, obviously you have your history, your story, help you through mm. depression, stuff like that. But how do you explain it to somebody that maybe comes in that's a little bit skeptical, you know, and mm. maybe you don't be at the level you're at, but maybe when you got started and you started practicing, how did you explain to them the benefits and to get them over that stigma? Uh, I think there are two ways and one, one, one is you can, you can talk people through, you can explain what you're going to do and okay. you can put them at, uh, so I think explaining helps to some people. Sure. Um, but the thing that really helps people is, um, I should explain that in acupuncture, you do a lot of touching, particularly in Japanese acupuncture, because okay. a lot of acupuncturists in Japan are blind. So they pick up a lot of their information from touch, touch and a yeah. lot of, yeah, so a lot of my teachers are blind in Japan. I uh, belong to a blind Japanese acupuncture association called okay. Tanahari. So if you're touching places, particularly on the tummy, mm-hmm. and it feels uncomfortable, and then you put a needle in, and it stops feeling uncomfortable right away, and people go, oh, something just happened. And that's an incredible thing to happen right there and then in the session. So what was that? Why, why was it painful? You say, well, that's like a dashboard. Your tummy is like a dashboard and it's showing me where there are problems in the body. Oh. And uh, oh. so when they feel that release, then that, that's, that's really that's, uh, something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like mind blowing how, how it can, because I mean, your tummy, like you said, is kind of our second brain. And there's a yes. lot of things that happen in there that, Wow, if you can release it there, then it can get relieve anxiety, pain, mm. a lot of different things, correct? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, so what what was your experience of acupuncture? You said you had I a lot of it. I just I would have uh injuries uh that mm. I kind of accumulated in different parts of my body. And um I just happened to have uh, in a martial arts world, you know, someone mm. that I was having them and and I was young at the time. I was in my early twenties. I just turned fifty, you know, last week. And it was a, um, it was, I went in with that skepticism 
But the person that referred me to acupuncture was somebody that I actually trusted. He was 15 years older than me. Mm. He was a great teacher. I still call him a mentor, even though he doesn't allow me to. He's still, to this day, you know, he still mentors me. And I went in and immediately relieved um, my plantar fasciitis down mm. in my lower ankle area into my calf, in my bottom of my foot, right? So, and then it just uh, goes to the point where now it's a, it's a weekly, I don't want to call it a ritual, but I do go. And I live in mm. South Florida where the world of acupuncture is actually pretty solid, meaning there's a lot of people that do it, believe in it and whatnot. And it's just helped me. And, um, and I absolutely stand by acupuncture. So for you, the proof was in the pudding. It was. Like you, it was. Yeah. So it you wasn't know, anything your acupuncturist said. It was actually the fact that you got results. Yes, sir. And, and mm. I because mm. and it was younger because I was younger. It made me a believer faster. If I was older mm. now, I try things now with more of an open mind and listen to the logic behind it. But back then, it was all about results because I was still competing mm. in sports across the board, and it was like I needed mm. to be at my best. And it just helps me keep you know, at my best for, for, a, for real. <laughs> so I absolutely love it. So mm. let me ask you, so is there, when someone comes into you for acupuncture, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you, but never do? Yeah, well, actually they often ask me a question, which is, they say, is there a point for headache or is there a point for back pain? <laughs> and that's in a sense, in a sense, it's a good question. And in another right. way, it's a, it, it's a great question for me because it leads me to my favorite answer. And I always tell people, so look, acupuncture doesn't cure anything. And they go, what? Mm -hmm. And I, I always enjoy that bit where they go, what? And I say, instead, what it does is it triggers the body to cure itself. So Love it's that. not the, yeah. So, you know, when, when someone, you, you go around to visit a friend, you, you ring on the doorbell of the house. And that doorbell sends a signal into the house. It creates movement in the house and a teenager comes bounding out and opens the door and says, hi, come on in. So you can't say the doorbell opened the door, but it sent information into the house. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're working on the outside of the body and we're sending triggers into the body and we're giving it a message. And then the, the body responds and it responds wow. by treating, by curing the pain or by regulating menstrual cycle or by you know, increasing the blood flow to the brain or whatever the problem is that the person's got. So, wow. so that's what we're doing. We're, 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 we're teaching the body to do stuff. We're triggering stuff. We're not wow. curing anything. I love that analogy that it doesn't cure. It triggers the body to cure itself. And our body mm. is so it's just dynamic. You know, I'm, I'm very like, I've, I've moved more into uh, like, I'm chasing energy. If you will, I always say that to people, um, but I'm moving more into movement is key. Like, you know, whether mm. it's yoga or, you know, I'm looking at the Atlantic ocean where I just go and I jump in and I, and I embrace energy. And like, I've noticed that, you know, for 50 years old, I'm doing a lot more than other 50 year olds do um, because of. Welcome my... to season five, by the way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Happy birthday. You did say that. Thank you so much. Um, but I, I find myself, my body healing itself, more on its own, but even my acupuncturist, which I'm gonna have to tell her that that's a great way you just explained it. Uh, it is fantastic. Thank you so, so much for explaining that way. So then let me ask you some, Oren, have you seen the movie Back to the Future? I have. Okay, let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Okay, mm. let's go back to say the double deuce, the 22 year old Oren Kabiti. What kind of knowledge nuggets would you drop on the younger Oren to maybe help them blast through, level up, or maybe just shorten the learning curve just a little bit? I thought about that. I don't think I would. Okay. I don't think I'd tell him anything. Well, maybe I'd say buy Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, but no, I don't think I'd tell him anything. I'd Maybe I'd just say, just go through it. You'll be okay. I love it. I love it. You know, yeah. and... Yeah, there's just so, so many people I see, you know, they'll have a, a, a foot in the future, a foot in the past, and they pee on the mm. present. You know, they, they just, mm. they don't enjoy the life. And, uh, but it seems like what you did, you're kind of a rocker and, you know, band guy, and you kind mm. of live that life. I don't think I would change anything with your life either, man. That's, that's fantastic. Mm. So, or how do you want 
your dash remembered, that little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, okay? Your life date and your death date. How do you mm -hmm. want Oren's dash remembered? Uh, I think I would love to be remembered as someone who changed people's lives. Okay. Uh, and I think that I've achieved that to some degree. Yes. Uh, I think I'd like to be remembered as someone who who contributed to the profession. And I think I've done that to Absolutely. some degree, but I want to do it more. Yeah. Um, and I want to be remembered as a kind uh, and loving friend. That's, yeah. I, I'm just feeling at ease talking to you, brother. It's like I could have, <laughs> yeah. you know, Kava. I, I love Kava. I don't know. Have you ever had Kava? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I, I enjoy Kava three times a week. They're in South Florida, uh -huh. there's Kava bars. So, you know, you right. do your bulas. I sip it just because sometimes my mm -hmm. tummy doesn't want to take it in with the, the, mm. the ceremonial slam, if you will. Um, but yeah, I just, I could just sit and chill with you, man. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. well, we could do that. That sounds yes. great. That, that, that's I've fantastic. never, I've never been to Florida, but You've I've never been to Florida. Okay. No, yeah. no, I, I've been to the U S but I haven't got, okay. I haven't got as far as Florida, okay. but, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm about 60 miles North of Miami. Um, in right. Palm beach, yeah. Palm beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right where I'm at. And, and I moved down here from Detroit, Michigan. So right. the, the weather is fantastic. Uh, and, mm. and I'm glad I made that move. So, what do you think people misunderstand the most about Oren? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll give away my secret that uh, I'm, I'm, a I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Cancerian. So Cancerians, okay. you know, I, I don't believe in astrology, but I think it's a nice analogy. Yeah. We have, you know, a, a, a crab, a crab is supposed to have a shell, like sure. a hard outer shell and be very soft on the inside right um i think i've got a very soft outer shell okay <laughs> so i look i look very gentle and soft but i can also make tough decisions when it's necessary yeah i can, I can see speak, that yeah. i can speak my mind so you, um you, yeah you seem like the closest that i've had actually had on the show of almost stoicism you seem very stoic like you're very deep in thought you continually mm. educate yourself am i right in seeing that yeah right yeah okay good good I, i'm glad my observant light is shining yeah, the right way <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know how you got that but yeah you're right yeah i think um uh i i had a mentor uh, uh i met him when i was 21 and he was 34 35 now he's okay. in his 70s and uh we're still very close we talk uh we talk once a week uh twice a week text all the time sure and one of the wisest people i've ever met and he was a, a teacher uh okay. a high school teacher and he said, uh, if a day goes by where I haven't learned something, it's a bad day. And I think it's just such a great, oh, that's a level up statement for later. Yes. But um, uh, I have to learn stuff. Sure. Uh, I, 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 that's, that's my drive. I, I, I love putting new ideas into practice yes. and kind of absorbing stuff. That's, yeah, and, that's me. And you have to keep such an open mind in this closed minded society that we have now mm. to do that. And it seems like we're being forced into boxes. That's one thing I don't allow myself. I don't, I'm not political. Mm -hmm. You know, I just kind of just have my views and I have, you know, I, I make two New Year's resolutions every year. Or, okay. One mm -hmm. is to make someone smile every day. That's, that's one. Nice. And two, unless I've disrespected you, hurt you in any way, I give zero, you know, what to what you think about me. Okay, that's just mm. how I am. I won't go out of my way to disrespect people. I'm not saying I've not had road rage and not to the point where mm. it's confrontational, but I have those thoughts, but I've just really through balancing meditation, uh, you know, yoga, Ashtanga yoga in, in, in my kava, I really just kind of relax and chill <laughs> now uh, and through things. I see that not much can really ruffle you, I would think. But when you get ruffled, you can really stand up to yourself. Am I observing that correctly? I can, I can, I can stand up for myself. Okay, yeah. I can see uh, that. I can see that. I can see that. And I think it's interesting what you said about road rage, because uh -huh. there's something about being in a tin can on your own, <laughs> right. where you just kind of like this other part of you comes out, and they're like, yeah. So yeah, I think that's probably my worst side is when I'm right. driving. But fortunately, in in this country, I don't drive. I cycle everywhere. Good uh, for you. It's just such. Yeah, well, it's just so easy. I don't. Yeah. You don't need a car in this town, right? Yeah. You know, and, and it's funny. Like, I, I actually have a sticker that I printed out that sits on my monitor called "Email Apnea," where breathing. When you're working, you're not breathing, and like 
the thing mm. with yoga that's really brought it to me to be a little bit more tranquil and acupuncture as well is that like when something happens i actually breathe through it now so that adrenaline's mm. not allowed to like flow through my body and and go that's why i love about the i call them the arts you know whether it's mm. you know whether it's acupuncture whether it's yoga whether it's uh feng shui in my place you know mm. it's like i like to keep order you know and it's something i never had when i was younger so i'm continuing like you continuing like you to level up every day and try to learn something new every day and from somebody and it's funny because at these kava bars or in, there's a lot of younger kids because it does mm. give you that relaxation feeling so instead of going to the bar to get you know uh tuned up on alcohol they come to kava and they'll like i actually listen and I've made friendships with these kids that are 21, 22. I actually am learning so much, you know, just from yeah. that generation as well. Cause a lot of people will tune that out because, you know, I'm 50 and it's like, so it was like seen and not heard do as I say, not as I do. And it's just like, now things have just changed so much. And like you said, you have got to continue to level up and learn. And thank you for saying that, man. So let me ask you something that take out anything electronical out of this question, like your phone, iPad, whatever, and take out any family, um, friends, um, in, in like the, the natural, you know, like gravity, air, water, what are three things that Orn can't live without? Hmm. Laughter. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. Movement. <laughs> you and I are like, brothers from another mother man i'm gonna tell you right now you know yeah man um and i'm sorry i can't take out family and friends okay good i was you know what i was gonna leave that in say yeah. community it's just yeah. kind of like yeah. yeah absolutely man yeah yeah, yeah. we are I, I, so I can't, much I, can't, I cannot live without them so you know that's it uh, wow so yeah but la laughter and movement um, Love that. I think there's two things that are really important to me. Um, maybe if, if you if you don't allow me to say family and friends, then I'll say books. Books, okay. Um, Continue. Like yeah. I, that's me. <laughs> I, you know, we say, you know, all not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. And whether you're a leader ah, in the field, that's nice, right? Or, yeah. or, or whatnot, it's like you've got to continuously your your mind is it will turn to mush. It, it's it's mm. weird, even physiologically, if you're not, it'll atrophy. And that's where I'd like to stay sharp and almost take it to overload because now I can meditate. I've learned and I've been taught by, you know, some very great, great people here in South Florida, how to really just center. And, and mm. so I can take it to that limit, but then I can also decompress, you know, because a lot right. of people get information overload and they try to go to sleep and they're just like, they don't get the right REM or the deep sleep and stuff like that, where I've not mastered it by any means, but it really does help. Well, using the arts. I love that. So what would Oren's definition of a life well lived be? That's a good question. Um, I think fully engaged. Um, yeah, I mean, let's uh, elaborate on that. Fully engaged with what? Yeah. Fully engaged with anything that I do. Um, again, my 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 friend Sean, my mentor, uh, mm -hmm. long long ago, he said, "Listen, Oren, even if I was doing toilet cleaning, I would really enjoy it." Oh, I love that. Uh, and I, I love thought, that. Yeah, it's true. It's like, and when we used to, we we shared a house at, uh, at the same time way back then when I was uh, living with Roisin, the the acupuncturist, and uh, when we clean, used to clean the house, he said, "Come on, let's make a game out of it. Let's let's have fun." And it was like, yeah, when you're sweeping the floor, you can really enjoy sweeping the floor. When you, you know, when I'm chopping onions, I'm really this, enjoying dude. chopping onions. Yeah, I so love this. I, I like to be engaged with what I'm doing. When I'm playing okay. with a dog or a cat, I'm fully engaged with that yeah. animal. So, yeah, it's just that um, is the best advice anybody could ever give. On, I'm sorry yeah. to cut you off, but it is. I mean, I, I had a mentor who owned an Italian restaurant in the Detroit area, hmm. and you know, I would, I would be pissed off to go and have to fold pizza boxes to get ready for delivery and he just mm. came in and it's just like listen man it, make this right now the only thing that really matters to you and you're going right. to start seeing other things in your life change this is after i got out of the military and i was just like trying to make some side hustle cash while i got my real estate mm. business off the ground 
and I'll, I'll, I swear that after that, I like, I, I, I made sure every box was faced the right way. It was easy for the delivery guys to grab them. And it's just, that's where it started, where you were saying, do everything that you can, whether you're stocking supermarket shelves mm. to make sure the labels mm. are out. I mean, that, that makes all the difference in the world. You don't know what that does to your subconscious mind to start attracting other great things, right? Well, I think it's a keystone habit. You know, when you, if you teach a teenager to make the bed and they make the bed really well and they do it, and then somehow that sets them up for the day and then they go off and they start arranging their books neatly or something. Right. And I think it's, um, I mean, that's maybe not the best example, but I think that once example. you, okay. So once you get focused on a keystone habit, this is a lot of, of, of what I do in my coaching. Like you get someone doing one thing well, and then it uh, it iterates throughout their life, and that's the, that's the that's the beauty of, of 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 habit coaching and like making helping people to do what they want. You get them doing one thing really well, and then the next thing it can that habit can grow, yeah, and then it can go sideways, um, right? And iterate into other habits, which also become very useful. Yes, yeah, and, and mm. it's like like we say in here in America, the domino effect, right? It's like you start right. having okay, yeah. habit, it just keeps going. I love it. I love it. I love it. And squad, we're going to come back in just a minute and take my good friend Orin through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today. Podcast varsity squad. We are back with my good friend Orin Kaviti. Kiv- and he's a fantastic acupuncturist with a moxie bus- bustion method. And Orin, we have a leveling up lightning round. You and I probably will one day over a couple of bulls of Kava. Um, probably discuss a few of these questions that I have, Okay, but you have five seconds to answer them. Okay. And they can all be answered, but no explanations, just the answer. Okay. Mm. Let's go. Okay. What is the best leveling up advice Oren's ever received? Learn something every day. Yes. Thank thank (laughs) you. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Uh, I get up early and I do Qigong in the morning and I keep a diary. And you learn something every day. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. if you, so if you were to see me kind of like walking around, and you're like, Fergie, he looks like he's in his doldrums a little bit. What book would you hand me? Tiny Habits. Oh, wow. Beautiful. DJ Fogg. Yes, yeah. absolutely. If you could, now don't lie to me on this one, young man, but if you could stay <laughs> one age physically, physically, for the rest of your life and keep the knowledge you've gained and continue to garner knowledge and wisdom. What age physically would you stay for the rest of your life? Uh, 50. Okay. Very good. Good. Cause yeah. I feel good at 50 myself. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> uh, okay. But I'm not going to explain that. Yeah. No. But it, any nicknames growing I? up? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, I'm going to come out to a million viewers. Orange McVitie. Orange McVitie. <laughs> Love yeah, the, oh. there was, uh, the, there's, um, you can elaborate. Uh, I, I want to hear this. Yeah, there's a, a kind of cookie in the UK. It's called Jaffa Cakes and they're made by McVitie's. Okay. Uh, and so they're like these orange flavored, the sponge on the bottom and okay. like a bit of orange jelly and then chocolate on top. They're really delicious. I have okay. to say, and love I love Jaffa Cakes. And then people said orange McVitie's. So I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it's, it. it. Yeah. All right. Chester checkers. Uh, checkers. Okay, me too. Favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? Moxafrica.org. Moxafrica.org. Hey, Donnie, put yeah. that in the show notes. What is that? I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna just detour off of my rules. But what is it? Um, it's a charity uh, that uh, works with countries where tuberculosis is a big problem, mm. particularly drug resistant TB. Okay. or TB and HIV cross infection. And they found out that doing in Japan, they used to treat before antibiotics were invented, they used to treat tuberculosis with moxibustion. Okay. Uh, so right up wow. in the early part of the 20th century before drug, these drugs were available, TB was cured and treated effectively in Japan with moxibustion. Wow. So Mox Africa said, well, there's all these people with drug resistant TB and all these people with HIV TB cross infection in Africa, Korea, uh, North Korea, um, and yeah, all over the globe, actually. Why don't we give them Moxa, train them to do Moxa on themselves, 
with these Japanese protocols, and then their drugs are going to work again. They won't be resistant, and that's wow. exactly what's been happening. That's what it did. So, yeah. Oh. So okay. yeah, uh, TB is such a big problem worldwide, and wow. uh, I love this charity. Uh, love it. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great charity. We're going to put that in the show notes, Danny. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And last question, and you can elaborate on this one as well, but what is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Uh, um, for me, it was the nine, 90s techno era. Uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Let yeah. Me, I, what what I, kind of music did you play when you were in your band days? Oh, I played a uh, new age rock. Uh, new age rock, okay. Uh, 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 yeah, so um, my favorite band at that time was XTC uh, okay. and The Clash and Sex Pistols and, oh, yeah, and the kind of more sophisticated new age music as well. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's the kind of music. Would you I have played. seen yourself playing at CBGBs? What CBGBs? Oh, you don't know CBGBs? It's like no. a, like even like a lot of those. Uh, uh, names that you mentioned actually played at CBGB's in, ah, in New York, okay. in a borough in New York. Right, you have to look yeah. it up because the, okay. the, I can totally see it with you. It, it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And, and uh, that, that's fantastic. It, yeah. Right. So, so I love rock, but the, I, ha I had a pivot to techno. Uh, I thought oh, techno you? music was just, yeah. So, I mean, and uh, I, yeah. I just I, so I like love Steve, that. Steve Oakenfold, is that his name? Or yeah. Ronnie Cycli or yeah i mean the kind of people i like maybe tim green or gary beck uh, okay. but um yeah so uh and uh there was a wonderful detroit dj and i've forgotten his name now but he came and played in malaysia a few times oh really and, uh, yeah okay uh, darn i forgot his name he was great <laughs> yeah okay. yeah i mean the detroit techno show is mm. out of this world dude it is it's yeah. cool i'm it's not my yeah. jam if you will but it was a lot of fun to go and attack and, and the people mm. there were just so cool and relaxed i mean some of them were on some stuff but what concert do you go to or venue mm. that they're not <laughs> so yeah excellent. right so, yeah or how can we find you um well you can go to my website but Oren Kavidi is kind of hard to spell on the radio so, okay. on the webcast so just um type uh, type in japanese acupuncture.com okay uh, got that and then that that will that will pivot to my author site yeah. I love it. I love it. And that'll all be in the show notes as well. So yeah. tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about this coaching program that you have going on. Um, it was, I've always been mentoring. I mean, since, since my early career in London, I have had um, junior practitioners under me and I've been mentoring and coaching, but of course with the pandemic that I pivoted to online coaching mm -hmm. and the, the beautiful thing about it, I mean, I, 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 I coach a lot of practitioners and some, some of my patients as well have kind of from Malaysia when I moved to Taiwan, they've kept on with me okay. through Zoom. Right. Uh, so I do more, more like coaching rather than acupuncture. But um, the wonderful thing for me is like working with practitioners because I can go into clinic with them now that we have Zoom in the way that we do. Sure. And they set, they set up cameras here and cameras there and right. I can work with their patients and really give them uh, like follow, follow them with their patients as well. Wow. But uh uh, for me, it's like, uh, yeah, habit coaching is such a powerful way to work with people, like what we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. um, because you're really helping people do what they really want to do. It's not like you're uncovering all these traumas and helping them, you know, cure traumas. You're just saying, sure. what is it you want to do? Or right. How are we going to get there? And love this that. is how you can do it. Yeah. And I, I love that. Right. Because right. it's, 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 yeah, you're just going with the flow with people. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I love that what you're doing. So is that available to the public or is it, it is, just, yeah. okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So no, I'm, I, I, I work with a lot of practitioners okay. uh, and I, that, because that's my experience, but I, of course I work with the public as well. So if okay. you want habit coaching, then absolutely. That's fine. I yeah. love it. I love it. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. So if you do me yeah. as our parting, as we part here it, can you leave the squad with one last knowledge nugget they can take with them internalize and take action on please yeah i think that when you're planning your day you need a moment of silence and a lot of people start their day with radio with <laughs> tv with sounds with movement with interactions uh but for me i think 
starting the day with silence is is the best way love it finding some finding some way to be with yourself and engage with yourself before you do the radio before you do the sure. coffee before you do just i love it silence so so yeah that would be my advice i that have worked that. for me no it no it's for me i 100 yeah. percent. i have 90 minutes every day every morning that's scott time mm. and it starts with intense breathing but then it moves mm. into sitting still and you know with the intense breathing i kind of use a wim hof method where i really oxygenate oh, my body right. and then i sit and be still and just let my day come to me mm. and then i get into my reading i have a pit bull he loves to walk and then i get on the water and then around uh, that 90 minute mark hop in the shower and i'm about serving others so i love i love 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 that you say to start your day in, in, in with a moment of silence and squad, mm. we just had a fantastic interview and kind of a masterclass, a free one, with my good friend Oren. You know, he said that acupuncture, you know, rescued him. And he will remind you that it's a kind of a it's a mood altering process. You know, it helped him with his depression, but it can help you through, like myself, through a lot of different uh, falls that I've had in life. And I'm not saying physical, but even mental, emotional. It's helped me help really level up. You know, in the, the Moxie Bustion, what he explained, which you can go to his website and learn a heck of a lot more, but, you know, he kind of warms up the skin with an herb and he uses the bamboo and it really starts the process out. And I don't want to try to educate on that. Just go to his site, please. And just remember the acupuncture doesn't cure. It triggers the body to cure itself. It's kind of like if someone rings the doorbell, according to Oren's analogy, it's like you hit the doorbell, it just doesn't open. Somebody, that body has got to come and you know, that teenager, like he said, comes and opens that door. It's like, it opens up to the healing. He's going to be remembered as somebody that positively changed people's lives. Right now, Oren is planting trees. That he's never going to sit in the shade of, and that's what I love about bringing Oren, that he's kind, mm. he's a loving dude. You know, he wants you to learn something new every day. Keep that mind focused and level and open and then level up. And he wants you to stay fully engaged with your passion. Remember those keystone habits that you integrate into your life and it will start integrating a different part, like a spider web throughout all the positive passion in your life. And he ended with, you know, start your day with a moment of silence. Don't hop on the radio. Don't grab your cell phone. Start that day and really, really focus. Just like I have, you know, my, the, the podcast that actually has the most listens and views is about how I started my day. And that's just fantastic. Oren does it as well. And Oren levels up his health. He levels up his wealth. He's humble yet hungry. We're blessed to have had him on. You've earned your varsity squad letter here at Time to Shine today. Thank you so much, brother, for coming on. I love your guts. Yeah, it's, it's been a real pleasure just hanging out with you and chatting with you. And I hope to see you in Florida with a glass of carver. Yes, we will, brother. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon, yeah. Oren. Bye now. Thank you so much. Thank you.